Good evening, and welcome to Meet the Candidates. I am Curtis Pamilia, and I'll be your host for today. And my guest is longtime Flint resident and mayoral candidate for the upcoming 2017 recall election, Mr. Chris Del Morone. Chris, thanks for coming in and talking with us. Thank you. Uh, so to start, why don't you just give us a little bit about your background and why you decided to run for mayor? Well, I was born in Flint, Michigan, and I've been at my current residence for over 21 years. Um, the, the reason that, uh, well, uh, on the background, um, I'm a graduate of the University of Michigan Flint with okay. a bachelor's degree in business administration, uh, also a graduate from uh, Mott Community College here in Flint. Um, I've done uh, very much uh, volunteering in the community with the Bobby Krim Road Race uh, okay. for over 20 years, uh, Easter Seals here in Flint, Michigan, out at the Buick Open in Grand Blanc. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm a lector at my uh, church, St. John Vianney Church in Flint, Michigan. Uh, I'm concerned about our community. And the reason I'm running, well, there's several reasons, but uh, one is there is a, a great amount of waste here in uh, Flint, Michigan. And that waste is uh, due to how city council votes and how the administration uh, implements different things. Mm-hmm. Um I, I can go into those a little bit later in the conversation. Sure, sure. Uh, as to the waste and how much it has cost the residents of, of the city of Flint. Um, so, well, I guess building off of the waste, maybe just talking generally, what would be some of your top issues that you would like to focus on as mayor? Maybe going into your top three to five issues that you you would like to focus on. Sure. Obviously, uh, the first one is the water situation here in Flint. Okay. Uh, first off, we need to replace those service lines, the galvanized and lead service lines. Right. Uh, in addition to that, and, and very important, is uh, the um, who will be our provider of water here in the Flint. The will water be, sourcing, uh, yeah. yeah. Will it be Great, Great Lakes Water Authority out of Detroit or the KWA Kerry Dundee Water Authority, uh, the new pipeline coming from uh, Lake Huron. Right. Um, that decision will be very difficult. Um, I have been against KWA from day one. I was the first and for a very long time the only one speaking out against KWA. I recognized that the residents of Flint would not be able to afford that. Mm -hmm. Uh, I had talked to the drain commissioner, asked him how many people in Flint were not, uh, who, how many people in Flint were on the Flint water system. And at the time he did not know the decision was already made, though, to, to put in KWA. Right. And uh, to his credit, he did get back with me on it. And I recognized that, well, there's there won't be enough ratepayers to pay for this new pipeline. Right. Uh, and now, with our dwindling population, we'll have even fewer ratepayers to pay for it. Okay. So it'll be very difficult to afford that. Right. Um, and we're finding that out now, and that's one of the reasons why... Detroit wants to be part of the KWA because they can spread that cost out over many more rate payers throughout Detroit and other communities that they provide. Mm-hmm. Um, so KWA was a bad idea. Without KWA, there would be no water, water crisis. crisis in Flint mm-hmm. because sure. the idea was to go to the Flint River until KWA became available. Right. So bad decisions. That but means, then, but then, flash, um, you know, fast forwarding to the present, we're in this situation where Mayor Weavers put out this thirty-year uh, proposal. You know, this proposal for a thirty-year contract with Gliwa. How do you feel, you know, uh, about the two thousand seventeen water sourcing debates as as contrasted to back, you know, in two thousand thirteen, yeah. two thousand fourteen? Great question. I think one of the things we need to look at, you know, should it be Detroit or should it be KWA? And what we need to look at is, are the internal costs, the the, the uh, fixed cost of both pipelines. Mm-hmm. So if there's a problem with the uh, pipeline running from Detroit to Flint, or even within, uh, or even without outside of Flint, who should pay for that? Will the ratepayers in Flint have to pay for problems with the pipeline in Detroit if there's a problem there? Um, we do not have all the cost. Uh, we have the total cost from the administration, which is a good thing. Right. But the problem is we don't know how those costs 
were derived, what they were derived from. Mm -hmm. So we need that information from the administration so we can make an intelligent decision. In regards to the 30 years, let us not forget that we've had a long-term contract with the Detroit now for, for quite some time. Right. You know, until it expired. Say it's been 60 years, years since we originally signed on. It's some different 30-year contracts with them. Yeah. 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 So, um, you know, I... It, it's hard to get lock the provider, say Detroit in this case, to a a set number because we all know over over time, over the years, things are going to go up. You know, the price of food, the price of housing, yeah, you know, education for our children. The water rates will go. Up. The yeah. Water rates will go up. So, uh, I, you know, it, it would be nice if we could pay in thirty years what we pay now. You right. Know, well, let's talk I, about that because, you know, in addition to the water quality crisis that the city's been facing, and before that there was a water affordability crisis, which right. has only gotten worse in recent years since yes. the switch to the Flint River. Um, what, what, what would be your uh, approach to addressing water affordability challenges here in the city? Well, you know, I think everyone agrees our water rates in Flint are too high. Mm -hmm. I, I believe the, the, the residents agree they're too high. Right. City council agrees they're too high. The mayor agrees they're yeah. too high. And their, the administration agrees they're too high. Mm -hmm. Well, the residents really can't do anything about the rate itself. Right. But the council and the administration, yeah. So I'm going to ask the council and the administration, and I have been asking them at city council meetings, why aren't you lowering the rates? Right. If you agree the rates are too high and you're in a position to lower the rates, why don't you lower the rates? And what do you think? I mean, even yeah. if they haven't yeah. provided an answer to that question, do you have any personal ideas about why the rates are so high? Well, I, well, over the years, there's mm -hmm. been a lot of waste. And what's happened is is the, the water and sewer fund has been funding a lot of operations here True. in the city of mm -hmm. Flint. Okay. And, and the residents have been ripped off. I mean, they've literally been stolen from. Mm -hmm. the, res the residents' money has been stolen from them. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we need to get a handle on that. Right now, 70% of the, 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 the residents who are, are using water are paying for it. 30% are not. Mm -hmm. and, and I believe we should not have to, to, to pay for poisoned water, right? which is where we're at now. But if you're going to get a, a water bill of $200 a month, there's a reason why you're getting a bill for $200 a month. And most likely it's because you're using it for something. Now, if people think the water is poisoned and they shouldn't use it, then they, they, you know, I, this is tough love, but you need to call City Hall and tell them to turn your water off. Mm -hmm. You know, if it's poisoned water and you don't want to use it. The mm -hmm. fact of the matter is, though, many people are using it and they're not paying. And I understand it's an affordability issue. But again, why isn't the administration, why isn't Flint City Council lowering the rates when we all agree they're too high? Mm -hmm. And they have it in their power to do that. Mm -hmm. 70% of the people are not supporting the system. For a hundred percent of the people, mm -hmm. and somewhere, the city needs to to, lo to lower the rates, especially that water service charge and the sewer service charge. Right. The, the 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 cost of the water and the sewer usage is not that great compared to the service charges mm -hmm. for the water and sewer. Mm -hmm. So uh, you were talking a little bit about people not not paying in some of their bills, and I know yeah. some people. Some people are struggling to pay their water bills just Absolutely. because of the affordability, and yes. some people are also, let's say, struggle, um, not wanting to pay their bills on, on kind of principle because yeah. they don't want to pay for poison, or at least they don't want to cover the debt that was incurred, let's say, during the, the period where the city was actually sourcing from the Flint River. Uh, what would you say to residents that are wanting debt forgiveness for that portion of their water bills? Well, I think the, the state of Michigan has a role to play in this. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it, you know, the residents didn't decide to, to tap into the Flint River. Right. So the state of Michigan plays a large part in this. Mm -hmm. Additionally, uh, to, to forgive those, um, uh, uh, those charges to the residents, uh, we also need to be uh, contacting the state to work on replacing the lines within our homes right. and the appliances that have been ruined. I've heard of people replacing sure. two washers already. Sure. Um, the hot water tanks are going bad. Sure. So to simply replace the, those service lines, they need to be. it needs to be done. 
but it, there's much but, more that needs to be done. Yeah, so if you've you got galvanized, about, galvanized lines in your home, right. you haven't taken care of the problem. Right. And okay. I've told, repeatedly told city council that they need to go back to Dort Highway and Stewart Avenue, where the, the, the water plant is, the water treatment plant is, mm-hmm. and start replacing the mains. They, the, I, in my opinion, they should have replaced the mains first, the service lines, and then the plumbing and appliances within the homes. Mm-hmm. Because if we don't replace the main lines that run out in the streets, mm-hmm. what happens is we have the pipes are too large for, for, the, for what we need for our usage, and the water begins to... S- stagnate in those lines and then we run into other problems interesting okay okay great well uh let's take a short break but we've got a lot of other issues to talk about so stay tuned and we will be back with mr chris del moroni mayoral candidate for the upcoming recall election thank you the toughest guy on earth. He does the work of two jobs, but only gets paid for one. Caregiving is tougher than tough. Find the care guides you need at aarp.org slash caregiving. There's a shelter pet who wants to meet you. Meet one today. Visit the shelterpetproject.org. Adopt. Welcome back to Meet the Candidates. I'm here with uh, Mr. Chris Del Moroni, mayoral candidate for the upcoming 2017 recall election. Uh, Chris, before the break, we were talking a lot about government waste. We're talking about the police force. You were talking about, um, you know, the, the, they're under finance, they're under hiring police police officers, and how the money is actually there to expand and and kind of grow the police force, even though they're saying it's not. Um, so I wanted to ask you a little bit about the economic climate of the city. Uh, what would be your economic, your, what, what's kind of your diagnosis of the city's municipal financial crises and how would you try and turn the gears around on, um, on that? Well, there is a problem with, with, uh, the finances in Flint, especially if I can go back to that water and sewer fund. Sure. Um, yeah. You know, if we continue the short term contracts with Detroit, as we continue these short-term contracts with Detroit, no one should be misled, but Detroit's raising the rates to us. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I think it's by a tune of about $600,000 a mm-hmm. month. And yeah, it's money poorly, uh, poorly wasted. Mm-hmm. And that's because the city council and the administration cannot agree to who should be our water source. And they need to do that. The mayor needs to give in detail to city council how they are coming up with these numbers as to which is the most affordable, mm-hmm. uh, KWA or GLIWA out of Detroit. Mm-hmm. Um, money for police, now, the money's not even there for police. Uh, right. Uh, keep in mind that when uh, we, we they passed the first six mills for police, we were promised dozens of police officers and firefighters, and it never happened. And that was because that money went to the general fund and it wasn't specifically earmarked for police and fire. so Similar you know, to what we were seeing with the water fund, with the water money. Well, what, yes, water money, yeah, money was being taken out of the water and sewer fund for, for other purposes. Right. Now, I would think if one has been on city council for over 30 years they, and been finance, uh, finance chair and, and, and the president of the Flint City Council, that he would have known that that money was going into the general fund and not police. And the city has been robbing the, the people over the years. 
let's look at the light fund. That used to come out of out of the general fund. Mm-hmm. Uh, the six mills on the police and fire is another, again, again another example. Additionally, we have the, the, the garbage charge, which is a, a, uh, a special assessment onto our, our property taxes. Mm-hmm. That used to come out of the general fund. So they've been taking all this money from the residents that used to come out of the general fund, and now they've put this additional burden onto the residents in Flint. Mm-hmm. It's unacceptable. It's unaffordable. It's not sustainable. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, we need to do something about it. the additional police that we would hire. They would be paid for the revenue that they generate in issuing tickets mm-hmm. and things of that nature. Mm-hmm. Well, and not to... Um not to make excuses for the city, you know, using money from these other funds and putting it into the general fund. But doesn't some of that also come out of a, a larger economic crisis, which is the lo- the loss of a tax base and, um, you know, declining state revenues as well. So, yes. I mean, some of, it, some of it is at the city level, but there is this kind of broader context as well. Absolutely. The, the state revenue sharing fund, that, that's been... That's been another burden right. placed on the residents of Flint in order for the state to balance their budget. Mm-hmm. And I I recognize that they have to budget their budget or mm-hmm. uh, balance their budget, but, you know, mm-hmm. the residents have to, to balance their budget also. And okay. It, and it, it, yeah, the, the, the reduction in, in tax base, now that's going to continue. And let right. me tell you how that's going to continue. And most people, I actually, I've heard of no one speak of this, but we are a population right now in the city of Flint of just under 100,000. Mm-hmm. The city of Flint planning department says we're going to go down to 70,000. Now, it won't happen tomorrow or the next day or this year, but it's going to happen. And we need to plan on that. We mm-hmm. just cannot wake up one morning and say, my God, we went down to 70,000 people. What do we do? Right. That's what got us in trouble with, with General Motors, as they were downsizing, the city of Flint was doing nothing to prepare for, for depopulation. For, for, to prepare for the lost tax revenue right. by GM closing okay. their plants and tearing them down, because you, you lose virtually all your tax base at right, that I point uh, with the closings of the plants. So we need to transition from, let's say, a city of 100,000 to 70,000. Because what's going to happen is the, 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 the face of the city of Flint will change. We will have fewer commercial businesses, mm-hmm. fewer places of worship, because the population won't be there to sustain them. And, and we need to look at that. There are certain areas you can drive down in, in, in the Ninth Ward on Fenton Road, and you can look at all those businesses. And, and the only thing I see there is they will never be sold. They will never be redeveloped, because most of them are... Our buildings in disrepair. Mm-hmm. They've been vandalized. They've been uh, uh, just they're beyond repair. They're not worth fixing, and the population's not there. When people, when we go from a hundred thousand people to seventy thousand people, people will either be leaving our city or they will be dying, mm-hmm. and they don't take their houses with them. And we're going to have more blight. There will be more homes to tear down. We need to get ready for that. What do you think of the the Imagine Flint plan? As a, as a kind of map, as a roadmap forward. Um, the, the master plan. Yeah, the master plan. Yeah. Exactly. Well, it, it sets a, let me say a course. It's not set in stone. There will right. be some things that will change in that over the years sure. and in that. So it, it it's good to have a, an idea and it's good to have a plan. So mm-hmm. in that sense, it, it's good. Um, but we need to, we need to, to, recognize that over the years that's going to need to be adjusted Mm -hmm. i mean you consider it was drafted before the water crisis for example it might need to be revisited in certain respects sure and it was drafted before this you know decrease in population that we're going to have Mm -hmm. i mean it's going to happen i see yeah um so you've stated that you you want to debate um councilman kincaid and mayor weaver Uh, talk to me about that well, I, I'd like to debate both of them, you know, I, and I don't have a problem with debating all the candidates, right, but, you sure. know, obviously Mayor Weaver is now the incumbent under recall, mm-hmm. and Scott Kincaid has been there for a long time. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, if we look at how 
Mr. Kincaid has been voting over the years. It's all about downtown tax breaks. Uh, you know, and I ask at council meetings when I go there because, you know, I'm at virtually every council meeting. I, I've been yeah. to more council meetings than seven of the nine council people <laughs> and more meetings than the mayor. Sure, yeah. So uh, I, I have a feel of what's going on in the city. And these tax breaks are hurting our city because what happens, you know, people say, well, it's going to bring investors in and, and we'll have more people working. At, you know, Yeah, that's true. But it doesn't increase our tax base of Mm -hmm. uh, property taxes, okay, which that's where we can generate more police and more Mm -hmm. fire and and help our neighborhoods and clean them up and things of that nature. So you really like to push on that issue. Yes, because quite often the tax breaks aren't needed to to bring someone into the community. All Mm -hmm. the tax breaks are is for the investor to make more money. And one of the examples I give is with the Capitol Theater. Right. You know, if... The council said yes to tax breaks for that, okay? If they had said no, the investors were not going to move the Capitol Theater to another city, okay? They were just going to go through with with the investment, okay? And it would mean less profit for them. Right. Or maybe okay. they would have gotten their return on their investment. It may have taken a longer period of time. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, over the years, they've given away tax breaks. Let me give the example of the Rutherford parking structure. It's a parking new parking deck in downtown Flint that the downtown development decided to build. Well, it was a cost of $10 million. Mm-hmm. The downtown development issued some bonds so that they could collect some money to build the, the, the structure. And then they were asking of the city to back the bonds. Well, I, at the city council meeting, I told the council, you don't want to back those bonds because you could be on the hook for $10 million, the cost of the project. Well, to date so far, Flint City Hall has paid over a $1 million mm-hmm. for those bonds. That's a $1 million that could have went into our neighborhoods. Mm-hmm. Genesee Towers is another example, you know. The administration, not this minute administration, I believe it was the former administration, they just did not do right in assessing the property. They mm-hmm. assessed it at, at, I believe it was like $8 million, $6, 8000000 million. And the judge said, well, as long as you're going to assess it for that amount and you're going to condemn the property, then you'll pay the 6 or $8 million. And the taxpayers paid it. Mm-hmm. It was a special assessment on our, our property taxes. And to make matter worse... They took C- CDBG money to help tear down the, the towers, about $900,000. Mm-hmm. That money could have went directly into our neighborhoods. And there is example after example of where this council, where someone's been on this council for 32 years and has made those types of decisions, and it's not fair to the residents of the city of Flint. My administration mm-hmm. will work to represent the residents of the city of Flint, not so much the business community. I see. We need the business community for jobs, mm-hmm. but we don't need a tax abatement at every every turn of the corner. I see. Um, so we are about out of time. We've just got a minute or so left. So what I want to do to close is I want you to look straight into the camera. Don't talk to me. You know, talk to the viewers, um, and just give them your pitch uh, why they should vote for you in the upcoming 2017 election. Well. The reason to vote for me is I'm not necessarily an insider at City Hall. I haven't been there a long time. I'm not making the poor decisions. I've been in front of City Council before telling them don't vote this way, and the result is they're voting the opposite direction, and it's costing us money. It's costing us money dearly, dearly, and we cannot continue this. Uh, I look forward to helping the people. But I'll also need your help in this. I want to try and bring our community together. It's another issue that we need to speak on. Our community is divided along race, along income status, along where we live. Mm -hmm. And we cannot continue this in our community. Um, So I, I, I encourage you to vote. I encourage you to register to vote. Vote, and I hope you'll vote for me.
Well, thank thank you you very much for being here with us, Chris. Uh, That is all the time we have for today for Meet the Candidates. But stay tuned because we've got many more interviews coming up for our upcoming both the mayoral race and the city council race for the 2017 election. Uh, I believe it's November 7th is election day. Um, So stay tuned and thanks for tuning in. Thank you.